If you're a good boy and you follow the rules, if you learn how to speak passively and inoffensively, if you can convince some other poor sleepwalking sap that you are possessed with an almost unhealthy desire to provide outstanding customer service or increase operational efficiency through the improvement of internal processes and effective organizational communication, if you can say stupid like that without laughing, if your record checks out and your pee smells right, you can get yourself a J-O-B. Maybe you can be the guy who administers the test or authorizes the insurance policy. Maybe you can be the guy who helps make some soulless global corporation a little more money. Maybe you can get a pat on the head for coming up with the bright idea to put a bunch of other guys out of work and outsource their boring jobs to guys in some other place who are willing to work longer hours for less money. Whatever you do, no matter what people say, no matter how many team building activities you attend or how many birthday cards you get from someone's secretary, you will know that you are a completely replaceable unit of labor in the big scheme of things. No sprawling bureaucracy or global corporation can ever love you. They have public relations budgets and human resources departments to protect their interests and their bottom lines. There is no us. A legal entity can't care if you live or die or if you're happy. If you're a good boy, if you're well-groomed and have a J-O-B and you learn to say the right things, maybe you can convince a nice girl to let you give her a baby and help her pay for it. If that's not your thing, you can spend your money getting drunk or busy yourself trying to hump whatever <laughs> drinks your fancy. Sex, after all, is social in the bonobo masturbation society. You'll have the hard one right to rub yourself against whatever makes you feel good as long as you follow the rules. If you're a good boy, you can curl up in the womb of your safe little Soviet Nouveau block apartment with your comfy stuff and enjoy your measured indulgences, your gourmet food, your microbrew. You can busy yourself trying to master the art of erasing your own carbon footprint, or you can do your part by biking to work, weaving recklessly through a barrage of trucks and cars that could crush you for the sheer thrill of it. Maybe you'll take a class and get your permit, and after another clerk confirms that you are competent enough to be licensed and properly insured, you'll be able to do something really crazy, like ride a motorcycle. Maybe you'll pay someone to let you play a game or run a race or put on a safety harness and climb fake rocks. If not, you can always watch someone else do it on TV. Maybe you'll get yourself worked up about some petty inequity or injustice and participate in some non-violent resistance. Maybe you'll convince yourself that you are making a difference by standing in the same place with other people and shouting angrily at people who don't care. If you prefer, you can get online and vent your confused, impotent, vainglorious rage by playing the anonymous tough guy on some blog or forum. Or you can just say and spend all of your money on video games that give you the vicarious thrill of slaughtering hordes of aggressive others. You can obsess over your fantasy football team. And there are always hobbies. You can find yourself something harmless and inoffensive to pass the time. Perhaps gardening. You can start a band or tinker with cars, become a movie buff. You can paint little figurines of warriors. You can even get dressed up in costumes and do live action role playing. Whatever you do, just find some way to busy yourself. There's nothing wrong with any of these things. All of them are fun. What is fun if not masturbating your primal brain a little? I like having fun. There is no harm in a little fun, which is why it is called fun and not something deadly serious like survival or war. If that is all, if your life is all about chasing fun, is that enough? Is this level of civilization, is all of this peace and plenty worth the cost? How long will men be satisfied to replay and reinvent the conflict dramas of the past through books and movies and games without the hope of experiencing any meaningful conflict in their own lives? When will we grow tired of hearing the stories of great men long dead 